Here I want to talk about primitive, you know, really primitive, going back to Stone Age, uh, technology regarding textiles, and then just more traditional textile technology in the centuries before the Industrial Revolution, just so we have a clear picture of what it is we're talking about. It's a lot easier to understand what this technology is doing when we see the way that it's done by hand with, without the technology or with limited technology. And um, so let's take a look at this. And now, What I want to do is to show you a video, and and this video, it's a little hard to understand, but there are subtitles, and you can, of course, look at it on your own, and, um, and YouTube has some good uh, closed captioning uh, devices. Uh, it's hard to understand because he's an Indian guy, and he's speaking English with a heavy uh, Indian accent, okay. Uh, but he really, he really shows uh, just how simple it is to create fabric from cotton, and and so I want to, I want to go through this, and and I've provided a, I've provided a an outline here of the process that he describes. So you take the cotton, you remove the seeds, and that's called ginning, and he uses. He uses terminology uh, slightly different, uh, you know, just in, in slight little things here and there, but I'm just trying to use a little bit more standard English way of thinking about it that fits with what I'm going to talk about later on, down below, uh, so to speak. Um, so ginning is removing those seeds, carding is making the fibers parallel, uh, Rolling the sliber is is getting it into a form that's ready to spin, and then you spin the yarn. And there's, you know, do, he he demonstrates how you do this just entirely, just using your fingers. Uh, using uh, also, he, he demonstrates using a drop spindle, which is a very uh, ancient form of spinning, and. Then he also demonstrates um, a more contemporary spinning wheel that's used in India. But all the key principles are there. So, uh, so that's, that's kind of nice. So let's, uh, you know, actually what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just leave that for you to watch. Um, I think, yeah, I think I think that makes sense. I mean, if you want to see that, uh, and I encourage you to look at it, but I think it makes more sense to just control the video yourself and slow it down or speed it up as you see fit, and and use this outline to understand the entire process. And then the, and there's not and, and then there's there's a, just a, a few more pieces so uh, to the the process of creating fabric. Um, once you spin the yarn, you get a piece of yarn. You get a spool of yarn. So you have yarn sp spooled up there. So this, this part uh, up to here, this first video, is just how do you get the yarn in the first place from a plant that's cotton. And so he shows you that. All right, and then, uh, and then the next step is to actually take the yarn and weave it into fabric. How do you do that? Um, you know, in our lives nowadays, we just don't do such a thing. But in ancient times, uh, you know, everybody was pretty intimately familiar or personally involved in creating fabrics. So uh, this is all kind of stuff that just seems commonsensical to people living in England in the 18th century, 
but for us seems very mysterious because we never weave our own clothing or, or even watch somebody do such a thing. Uh, but it was all over the place in England at, at this time. So there's a, you know, it's very important to understand the difference between uh, warp and weft. So the warp and, and what we'll see in, in the videos later on uh, is that the warp is the part that looks like this, that's, that's up vertical uh, in the way that I'm showing uh, with strands crossing like this. And then the weft is what is passed through that gap and then pass through the other way. So it's like you pass through the weft and then you cinch that down and then you pass it back the other way and you cinch that down and you make this warp and weft pattern. So take a look at this picture and just make sure you understand the way this is working, but think about it going, uh, going uh, you know, one direction and then back the other direction, and one direction and back the other direction, because you'll see that that, that comes up and that's a, and, and improving the efficiency of that back and forth is like the key thing that, 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 um, that ignites the industrial revolution in textiles. You guys are seeing that, right? Okay, guys. All right. Um, and here's a video of a woman weaving silk, uh, but the principle here is the same. So this is very, this is very simple. So notice that she's passing using this, this stick, she's pushing through the, the weft um, portion of the weaving process. And then the warp is, is the orange sort of strands here. And we'll just see this same sort of configuration over again, but over and over again. But notice that, you know, this is not a super high tech sort of situation. She's making a silk, uh, she's making some silk uh, fabric, some silk textile. You know, fabric would be called the textile, but the entire production process and everything connected to it is called textiles. Um, but we see that this is something uh, that anyone could learn to do. Of course, it takes a, a great amount of skill to, to do it well, but the basic concept is pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's take a look at what she does. La punta, la barra, la la ley, no sé si es la verdad, pero hay 40 personas que lo hacen esto profesionalmente y es más de 100 que hacen los puntitos. ¿Es la verdad o no? Pues sí hay mucha, sí hay mucha gente todavía. Por ejemplo, en este, en este taller o para este taller, a lo mejor trabajamos algunas 20 personas más o menos. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Entre, entre los que son side, los que hacen la tela y los que hacen la punta. Ah, okay. Pero en aquel taller, pues first, hay a lo mejor yeah. otros 20, 30, a lo mejor hasta Opening it up and doing it over, back and forth. So it's just back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so I, I think that's very instructive. At least I find it very, very helpful uh, to understand what's going on. Um, 
in that earlier video, there's a demonstration of a hand spindle. That backstrap loom is what was just in the video that I just showed you. And these are at least from 10,000 BC, maybe going back thousands or tens of thousands of years before that. Um, it's not inconceivable that Stone Age people could do this. This is Stone Age technology. Um, in fact, it's, it's very likely that Stone Age people were doing something similar to this. Um, uh, uh, warp weighted loom is similar to a backstrap loom, but uses weights in order to, to uh, you know, manipulate the warp using weights and pulleys, uh, simple weights and pulleys, uh, which probably goes back at least to 8,000 BC when we have agriculture begin and people start to settle down into permanent locations. And then that kind of loom is what exists throughout like ancient Greece and, 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 and that entire period. Um, but as we move into, into uh, you know, uh, the more classic period of civilization, uh, 400 BC, then we get the draw loom. And this actually requires two people to operate it. Uh, it's more of a contraption, you know, and we'll see, you know, uh, at the very end, there's an example of a, you know, an industrial version of a draw loom. Uh, but I do have some links in here that you can look. In fact, if we if we click on this, uh, this does not have a picture though. Uh, but there is um, there is information on it, and you can you can look it up. Um, and I want to say that there are some pictures in here someplace, but I just don't know where those are. Uh, but uh, so the draw loom becomes very important at the end of, of this whole um, discussion because that's, that's the, you know, the, the kind of loom that has a little bit more sophistication that, that is really exploited at the end of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the cotton gin. Uh, a very simple contraption, uh, but probably didn't appear until uh, 450 AD. Um, before that, people were probably doing it by hand in the way demonstrated in the very first video here. Uh, but the simple cotton gin is just uh, a very simple, and I guess I can show it to you here. Uh, let's do this. I found my customers on YouTube. Get started with. G'day. Well, today we've got another little device to show you. This is a cotton gin designed here. And I'm not hearing the sound, but I'm assuming that you can. And made by ourselves um, for separating the seeds from the cotton bowls. Uh, it's in its portable folded up state. Um, the seed catch catchment box goes to there. The unit comes up to there, the brass catch locks it into position, now it's ready for use. Now traditionally it was that a bale of cotton could be picked in about a day according to the song, but it would take about a week to get the seeds out of it. I'm going to have to make a device to keep cats off tables, but not today. So we take a cotton um, bowl we tease it out just a little bit. There's, there's seven or eight or nine seeds in it. And then we come around to here. And we simply wind it through and you'll see the seeds begin to separate.
and it's no more difficult than that. It doesn't take very much effort at all. Alright, so... So that is a cotton gin, uh, a simple cotton gin, and that is the ginning process. Something that has to happen before you can um, card the card the cotton and get it all laid out into parallel fibers, and then uh, get it into your slidle and then spin it. Um, so. All these components are very important. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, the spinning wheel, which are demonstrated there. And, and there's uh, this last video is actually a good demonstration of the way these technologies looked at the beginning uh, of this historical survey that I'm going to do for you. So uh, I would encourage you to to watch this and probably what I'll, I'll do is I'll just, I can, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, just, just uh, take a look at this video uh, after this video right here that, we're, that I'm doing for you. Um, take a look at this video and that kind of is a good explanation of everything that we're talking about. And he demonstrates the use of a hand loom uh, invented somewhere around 1200, um, and that hand loom is the big player at the beginning of our story. The hand loom and the uh, the uh, the spinning wheel, and he also demonstrates the spinning wheel and and the kind of spinning wheel used by the English at the beginning of the 18th century. Okay, so take a look at that. And then he also describes some of the, uh, the inventions that I'm gonna discuss uh, further on down. All right, that's that.